So locate the stationary point. So the function z is equal to x squared plus 3y squared plus 4xy minus 20x minus 32y plus 20 and state their, their nature, isn't it? Now, for you to locate this stationary point and state their nature, you must get all the six partial derivatives. So that's the first step, is to get all the six partial derivatives. So the first one, because here we have z is in terms of x and y, that simply implies that z is a function of x and y, isn't it? Are we together? Are we together? So it implies z is a function of x and y. So it means for us to get the six partial derivatives, we start by differentiating z partially with respect to x. Because z is a function of y, f and x and y, after you've stated that, then you start. If I differentiate it partially with respect to x, if I differentiate this function partially with respect to x, what do I get, isn't it? Only x is considered a variable, anything else is a constant, isn't it? So x squared, if you differentiate, you get 2. 2x. 3y squared, there is no x, so it means the rule of this is a constant. If you differentiate, you get 0, isn't it? Then 4xy, with respect to x, it means 4y is a constant, isn't it? If you differentiate x, you get 1, so you remain with plus 4, isn't it? Minus 20x, x is a variable, if you differentiate x, you get 1, times 1 constant, you remain with negative 20. Negative 32y, there is no x here, so that is a constant. If you differentiate it, you get 0, isn't it? Are we together? Yes. Uh, same to this, the constant you get? Zero. So we differentiate the rule of that function partially with respect to x. Are we together? Then again, what if we now differentiate the rule of this function partially with respect to y, isn't it? If we differentiate the rule of this function partially with respect to y, it means only y is a variable, isn't it? And x is considered a constant. So it means there is no y here. So the whole of this is a constant. If you differentiate a constant, you get 0, isn't it? Then here, there is y here. So if you differentiate this partially with respect to y, you get 6, 6y. Here, there is y here, meaning 4x is a constant, isn't it? If you differentiate y, you get 1. So you remain with plus 4x. Then here, yeah, there is no y here. It means the whole of that is a constant. If you differentiate a constant, you get 0, isn't it? Here, there is y here. So if you differentiate y, you get 1. 1 times negative 32, isn't it? If you differentiate that, you get 0, isn't it? So we've done it for the first time with respect to x, and we've also done it for the first time with respect to y, isn't it? Now you start with this one. When I differentiate the function for the first time with respect to x, what about if I now do it for the second time with respect to x again? We are at this point, isn't it? So I'm now differentiating this function for the second time with respect to x. We are now differentiating this with respect to x. What do we have? Only x is a variable, isn't it? So differentiating 2x, you get? This one you get? <coughs> 0. Because there is no x here, there is no x here. Differentiating constant, you get 0, 0, isn't it? The first time we did it partially with respect to x, the second time we are doing it with respect to y. So if you differentiate it with respect to y, only y is a variable. Are we together? So it means the whole of this a constant goes to zero. If you differentiate this, you get four. Come to this second one. The first time you did with respect to y, what about if we do with respect to y again? We differentiate it with respect to y again, isn't it? Only y is a variable. So if you differentiate this six y, you get only y is a variable, meaning this part the whole of it is a constant because there is no y here, isn't it? So differentiate you get zero. This a constant. Differentiate you get c. Zero. Then again, the first time here was with respect to y, what about if we are now doing this with respect to x, isn't it? It means y is now a variable, and you have what is there, 4. Meaning if you differentiate constant, you get 0, because you are doing it with respect to x. Meaning there is no x here, so this is a constant, isn't it? If you differentiate this, there is x here, you get 4. If you differentiate this, you get 0. Are we together? Now, having found the four partial derivatives, we now want to find the stationary point at state is nature. So you know at the stationary point at the stationary point the derivative is zero. And here in partial derivatives we have two derivatives, isn't it? So it means either 
partial derivative with respect to x or partial derivative with respect to y is zero, isn't it? So from there you now have your partial derivative with respect to x you found was two, two x plus plus four y minus twenty to be equal to what? Then your partial with respect to y you found six y plus four x minus 32 to be equal to what? 0 at the stationary point, isn't it? So from there you can now rearrange your equations. You can see this was a very easy to deal with. It's just a matter of observing, isn't it? If here we have 2x, here we have 4x, meaning from 4x it is very easy to get 2x so that we use elimination, isn't it? Meaning we divide this second equation by 2 to get 2x and this one be 2x, isn't it? So there, the first equation we have 2x plus 4y oh yeah that is that is the simplest way because we cannot divide all through by four not one of the fractions okay 2x plus 4y minus 20 going to the other side plus 20 then the second equation if you divide everything by 2 if you divide all through by 2 so you get 4x divided by 2x you start with x so that you are in isn't it 4x divided by 2 you get then 6y divided by 2 you get positive 33 divided by 260, so negative 16 going on the other side, positive 16. Are you seeing that? So have you seen you now have 2x, 2x, meaning you can eliminate x by subtracting, isn't it? Are we together? You just use the method you are comfortable with, isn't it? So what do we have here? If you subtract this minus this is 0, I have positive 4y minus positive 3y. You go to the calculator, positive 4 minus positive 3. What does the calculator give you? Eh? You can see the way I'm putting this thing. Because there's a situation where you find 2x minus 4y is equal to 20, and 2x plus 3y is equal to 16. Then the minus, then you are coming here and saying 4 minus 3, then you are saying 1. As you can see, this is very well is negative 4 minus positive 3. Are you seeing that? So we have. That minus that will remain with y, isn't it? To be equal to 20 minus 16, 4. So you found y to be 4. So having found y to be 4, we find x by substituting y in any of the equations, isn't it? You can use any equation, you can even use this, this one. 2x plus 4y is equal to 20. Many words is why you substitute the value of y, isn't it? So what do you get? 2x is equal to 4. Positive 16 going the other side is negative 16, isn't it? So what is x? x is 2. So from there you get your stationary point x, y to be? To be 2, 4. So you've actually located that, the stationary point, isn't it? You've located the stationary point to be 2, 2, 4. So having located this stationary point, we now want to determine its, its nature. We now want to determine its nature. Are we together? How do you determine the nature of a stationary point? So you have your z is a function of x and y. So we have our z to be a function of x and y. So it means two variable is a two by two matrix. We construct the Hessian matrix, isn't it? So the determinant of the Hessian matrix will be a two by two matrix means we'll have two by two is four, four elements, isn't it? Square matrix. So from there, x is the first variable, it forms the first row. X is the first row. We are having the first row. Y, second row. So we've defined rows. It's when we go to the column, isn't it? X is the first, it becomes the first column. First column, I'm done with the first column. Y is the second, it becomes the second column. Y, Y. So from there, you now come and put your point 2, 4. So what is the determinant of the Hessian matrix at the point 2, 4, isn't it? So at the point 2, 4, the determinant of the Hessian matrix is given by what is f of x, x from your, from your derivatives? 2, isn't it? Then what is f of x, y from your derivatives? 4. 
What is f of y x from your derivatives? Four. What is f of y y from your derivatives? Six. Six. So what is that determinant? Product of elements in the main diagonal minus product of elements in the other diagonal. You get negative four. So that means the determinant of the Hessian matrix is less than because negative four is less than zero, isn't it? And when it is less than zero, it implies the discriminant is. It's the opposite because discriminant is negative, the determinant of the Hessian matrix, isn't it? So if discriminant is greater than zero, it is a shadow point. So it means our point 2, 4 is it's a shadow point. So the point 2, 4 is a shadow point. And that is how to handle a problem of that kind. That is how to handle